Hello, welcome to Everyday HDR. Today I'm going to show you how to make dreamlike looking landscapes. Um, you may have seen this in movies where uh, people are thinking back to a past situation where the everything's kind of blurred a little bit, but it's got a nice sepia tone look to it. So we're going to go ahead and create that effect today. So go ahead and open up the image that you want to make that effect on. Now we're going to keep the background copy there. We're, we'll keep it locked, that's fine but we're going to duplicate it twice. And the reason why I always duplicate the background layer before I do anything um, in general, not just for this image, is that if I ever need to go back to it and get something from that, I can do that whenever I'd like to by duplicating it and you'll see how, how that works in, in this tutorial. So go ahead and duplicate it twice by pressing Control J twice. With the topmost duplicate right here, go ahead and change that to pin light. And with the middle sandwich layer, go ahead and change, uh, go ahead and blur that. So go to filter, go to blur, and go to Gaussian blur. We're going to really get this blurred at about 52.4. It's going to be really high up there. So you can see the effect of our pin light right here. Our pin light is bringing out the details in uh, the the high spots of the the yellows and the high spots of the of the darks. So with that Gaussian blur, we're going to go ahead and tone it down a little bit because it's pretty hardcore. So bring that down to about 76, 75. And then go ahead and bring the fill on that one down also to about 90 or so. Now what we want to do is create a saturation layer. So click on this little half white, half black circle and go to Hue Saturation. We're going to go ahead and bring the master up to about 14. We're going to get this image because later on we're going to go ahead and put a uh, sepia tone effect on this. So with that saturation, it's going to ahead and give that the colors and once they've been sepia toned, some little bite to them. And we're going to pay special attention to the blues in this one. So go to the blues. Um, if you look at the color spectrum, blue is blue and, and uh, orange are complementary colors. So blue and brown work pretty well together. So we're going to go ahead and hike up the blue saturation. but go ahead and bring the lightness down a little bit in the blue. Okay. Now what we want to do is make a uh, carbon copy of everything we've just done. So to make a carbon copy of all three of these, go ahead and press Control, Shift, Alt, and E, and that will make a carbon copy of everything below it. So you can go ahead and get rid of these right now if you'd like to, but I usually leave them there. So this carbon copy contains all of the information that's happened within these three layers. So with this carbon copy, what we want to do is make a vignette. But we aren't going to do the typical gray vignette that we usually do, uh, where the, the gray comes in on the sides. So we're going to go ahead and, and go the opposite direction with it. So the saturation is changing on the sides, kind of narrowing your vision in a dreamlike way. And I don't want to pull it too far because you see it blows everything out. I don't want to blow it out. I just want to kind of change those edges a little bit. 48 is good. So now after we've done that, the next thing I want to do is create a duplicate copy of our background layer. See, I'm going back to there. So I press Control J on there again. Now I'm going to bring that up. And what I'm doing with this is I'm going to make a high pass sharpen layer. And that's going to bring out the details that we had in the original image, but still keep the underlying blurred effect. So go ahead and change that to soft light. And then go to filter, go to other, and go to high pass. And I usually don't go any higher than 4.2 in my high passes, especially with soft light. Press OK. So now we've got a pretty cool dream-like looking atmosphere. You can see what our high pass did. It, it really just started to bring out uh, some of the detail that we see here. Here it's blurred. Here we get some of that detail back, blurred, get some of that detail back. Now what we're going to do is create a sepia tone for this. So click on this half black, half white circle again, and go to gradient map. Now the reason why my gradient map looks like hell is because it's selecting colors that I had used previously on another image. Um, so double click on this blue and uh, red bar here and click on the red one right here. Just double click on that red stopper and go to white. Now double click on this blue one and we want a nice like uh, burnt sienna color. 
So I've already pre-selected this color. I've already worked this image before, so I'm, I know what color I'm going to use. Now you could go down and slide down here and get that sepia tone that you're looking for. And that doesn't look too bad, but the one I'm going to use is 4 Bravo 362 Alpha. That's the sepia tone I'm going to go with. Now I'm going to change this to color in the blending option, and I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit to about 75. So I'm bringing some of that underlying stuff back. And I'm going to drop the fill a little bit too. So there you go. There's our dreamlike looking atmosphere. If you save this as an action, you can just press play on any image you want in the future. If I was really going to be uh, using this image, I would want to clean some stuff up. Um, I would take my... Uh, spot healing brush and I would clean up what's going on in the nasty blown out clouds I have because it's not making it look very dreamlike. And the spot healing brush is doing a good job fixing those clouds as it always does. So that's just another thing you can play with this weekend. Have a good weekend. Thanks for stopping by.